Um, so it's a 53-year-old male with a past medical history of hypertension, poorly controlled diabetes, came into the ER uh, with a right foot wound. Um, he said that initially it started as a blister, but sort of had been slowly progressing for the last two to three months. Um, a week prior to coming into the hospital, started to develop some uh, purulent drainage. Um, at home, it tried some over-the-counter creams, he had said, but no relief and sort of uh, no healing of the wound. So on admission, uh, he was a febrile heart rate, was 95, blood pressure, uh, it was hypertensive. Uh, his labs were notable uh, for a white count of 15. His set rate was 103. CRP was 10.5. Um, and this is a picture of the wound uh, when he initially presented. Uh, so it was on the right lateral heel, uh, 4 by 2 by 0.5 centimeters. Um, pulses weren't palpable. Um, and as a result of the wound, sort of the inflammatory markers that were higher, he was admitted to the medicine service. Um, was initially started on broad spectrum antibiotics due to some concern for uh, infection, obviously. Um, and then podiatry was consulted. Um, he underwent an IND that uh, following day um, and underwent uh, bone resection of the calcaneus. The intraoperative findings were that there was pus with necro necrotic fat, uh, muscle and fascia on the lateral side of the foot. Uh, the periosteum was necrotic with soft bone um, and it was noted to have poor bleeding. And at that time they had planned for further resection of the calcaneus. So this is a picture sort of uh, immediately post-op from him. Um, as a sort of the routine sort of uh, with most of the pe people that come into this service, um, they underwent sort of a non-invasive vascular evaluation, given he had non-palpable pulses and sort of the poor bleeding uh, of the wound. Um, his right lower extremity ABI was 0.69, and his PVRs were suggestive of uh, distal SFA and popliteal disease. Uh, his toe pressure uh, was 58 millimeters of mercury, and his TBI was 0.38. So some evidence of uh, vascular disease as well. So. Uh, in the course of his hospitalizations, his uh, deep wound cultures returned positive for MSSA and enterococcus, um, and his path from the initial bone resection uh, was consistent with acute osteomyelitis. Um, as a sort of a result of those findings, he went back to the OR on the post, uh, sort of post-operative day five of his hospitalization, um, was found to have sort of extensive necrosis of the muscle. Uh, the first and second layer uh, of the muscles were excised, um, and he also had a partial uh, calcaneectomy. Um, and sort of uh, post-op day five here, you can see uh, sort of post-op from this procedure um, and then also follow sort of post-op day seven. Um, sort of still poor bleeding uh, in the entire wound. Cultures at that time um, and deep cultures uh, still remain positive for MSSA and enterococcus. Um, and sort of during his hospitalization, uh, ID was consulted. Uh, they recommended uh, six weeks of antibiotics uh, or further sort of uh, amputation. So a Y45 score was calculated for him, was found to be 313. Issue is it's not really applicable in this situation, I think, um, just given the fact that he has, still has ongoing infection in this situation. So um, at this time, uh, given the large soft tissue defect, um, and it was felt that this wound was not going to heal, um, he was referred for a possible BKA. Um, and prior to that BKA, the surgeons had requested uh, peripheral angiography. So his iliac angiography uh, reveals a severe uh, stenosis of the right common iliac. Uh, the uh, from common femoral, common femoral looked okay. Uh, I can play one more. It should be playing on its own. You can see that iliac stenosis right there. Um, significantly also, he seems to have uh, almost a subtotal occlusion of the SFA, uh, the right SFA here. Uh, further distal, he also has severe stenosis uh, further down. And below the knee, his AT uh, looked good, with good flow. The perineal also looked uh, okay. The PT was noted to be occluded. Uh, it started moving his foot in some of the pictures, so I just took some plain films. Um, but just so you know, is he does have to the foot a uh, single vessel, um, but has a multi-level occlusion of the perineal, um, as well as the distal portion of the PT. PT was filling uh, retrograde by some AT collaterals. So uh, as a result of this, and the plan was uh, initially for a BKA, um, and given his severe inflow disease, we decided to go ahead and treat his SFA. Um, planned was an anti-grade approach, used a glide wire advantage and a quick cross support catheter. Was initially dilated with a 60 by 100 angiosculpt um, with some, uh, with a good result. Uh, post balloon angioplasty um, has a very minimal, um, some, some very non-flow limiting dissections, but overall uh, a good result. And as a result of that, we thought that we could get away with uh, going ahead and treating this with uh, DEB. So we used a 60 by 120 Stellarex uh, and also a 60 by 80 proximally. Post procedure um, had a good result distally, uh, no, no, no large dissection, um, improved flow down the SFA. Uh, that left the right iliac, which was treated with a 70 by 29 uh, balloon expandable stem from the contralateral size, um, which was further post dilated uh, with a 90 balloon. Um, so overall, an improved flow. Uh, for, uh, day 14 of the hospitalization, hospitalization uh, underwent uh, below knee amputation. 
Um, you can sort of say, I think it was a little bit earlier than that, but post-op, uh, they actually went ahead and did a guillotine am amputation. Um, cultures and path um, were negative for osteomyelitis on the bone margins, um, but did have evidence of good healing. Uh, subsequently went back for a, uh, a revision of his BKA um, for a definitive closure of it, um, sort of formalization. Um, followed up in clinic with good healing of his amputation stump and was subsequently referred for uh, prosthesis. Um, so it's sort of a multi-pronged approach to sort of treating this wound. And that's the case. Thank you. Thanks.